Hello, welcome to Exo Photography. My name is uh, Daniel. Um, today we are going to talk a bit about eyepieces. So we have uh, covered in earlier videos the uh, the mount and uh, uh, just a recent video uh, how different kinds of telescopes um, are working and uh, how they look. Um, today I was thinking we are going to take a look at what we put in uh, this end of the telescope. You usually want to use a diagonal um, with uh, refractors and uh, schmidt cassegrain telescopes or even doll Kirkhams and well there are several different telescopes where you want to use a diagonal. Uh, you are not using a diagonal when you are looking through a Newtonian or a Dobson telescope. Um, but usually uh, this goes in the uh, very back of the telescope. When you are buying a telescope, um, uh, it follows uh, one or two eyepieces. Uh, this Celestron uh, 1.25 inch eyepiece um, came with my nine and a quarter inch Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, it has a, a focal length of 25 millimeters. So it's a wide uh, eyepiece or it's a long focal length. This particular kind of eyepiece is called a plusle. Um, there are different kinds of uh, constructions. Um, uh, it basically has to do with how many lenses and what kind of lenses um, it is uh, inside. So there are different sizes and different kinds of eyepieces. Um, this one is, uh, well, it's okay, but if you want to buy some higher quality eyepiece, um, I went out and bought the Celestron Luminous. So it's the same barrel size, it's 1.25 inch. Um, this particular eyepiece has a uh, focal length of 7 millimeters. So um, how do these numbers uh, work? Well, if we have a telescope, um, this particular telescope uh, has uh, 700 millimeters of focal length. Uh, and when we are putting the seven millimeter eyepiece inside here, um, that will be a magnification of 100 times. So the math behind this is you take the telescope focal length and divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece. In this case, 700 millimeters divided by seven. If we want to use this particular eyepiece, this is a two inch diagonal, so I have to put a um, adapter inside and then put the 1.25 inch um, eyepiece inside. Um, so this combo right here has a magnification of 100 times. And I also have to say that um, 7 millimeter uh, is quite a high magnification. You really need some clear skies to be able to use such high magnification. If we take this eyepiece which is 25 millimeters isn't that supposed to be higher magnification? No, it's the opposite way. So, in um, if we are using 700 millimeters uh, together with a 25 millimeter eyepiece, we have a magnification of 28 times. So, 700 millimeters divided by 25, and this is how it looks. But what if 
I want an eyepiece in between. Well, you can go out and buy an eyepiece or you can buy uh, one of these. Uh, this is called a Barlow lens. It doubles up the magnification by two times. Um, there are several different kinds of Barlows. Uh, you have 1.5 times, 2 times, 2.5 times. So there are kind of different Barlows out there. This particular one is a 1.25 inch. There is also 2 inch models. And also Teleview has what they call a power mate. These are a bit different um, than uh, um, a Barlow lens. I won't cover the, the difference today, but um, there is different kinds of uh, adapters and for uh, changing magnification. So how does this work? Well, you have a Barlow lens and you have a eyepiece. If you are using the 25 millimeter and put it in a two times Barlow lens, we have a 12.5 millimeter eyepiece. So um, that will together with this telescope be about um, 58 times the magnification. So if we use these two together like this we have a in-between. What is the difference between um, cheap and expensive um, Eyepieces, well, um, there are different kinds of um, construction, as I told you, this one is a Plossel. Um, there is also some kinds uh, which is called a Kellner eyepiece. Um, my favorite for planetary is, um, I use this uh, quite a lot. This is a telescope service planetary uh, eyepiece, uh, which has a focal length of 9 millimeters. Uh, this kind of eyepiece doesn't have uh, a very uh, wide field of view. Um, but if you want to uh, cover a very large area of sky, you want a, a 3D effect when you are watching through the telescope, you can go ahead and buy these uh, Celestron Luminos. The 7mm is uh, quite high magnification, so I went out and bought a uh, let's have a look a 15 millimeter um, this covers a bigger part of the sky so it's a uh, very nice not so high magnification uh, quite good to to look through uh, but i want a even bigger feel of view i really like when uh, a bigger feel of view when i'm watching uh, globular star clusters and and such. Um, so I went out and bought the 31 millimeter <laughs> eyepiece. This is huge um, and it's also quite heavy. So you need a sturdy mount to use this and you also notice um, it is a two inch uh, barrel on this bad boy. So we don't need the 1.25 adapter. I'll just put this in. And if you take a look here, you can see uh, it has a quite big uh, circumference and, and diameter. Uh, but what I really like with these ones is you can uh, turn on this uh, rubber ring and you can uh, rise and lower the support for the eye. How high magnification can I use with a certain telescope? Well, there are some formulas out there. And uh, for this particular telescope, which has a aperture of uh, 102 millimeters, if we take 2.5 times the telescope aperture, um, that um, is uh, 255 times the magnification. Uh, that is quite high. Um, I probably won't have such clear skies um, here in Sweden to be able to use that. Um, but it, it has a kind of um, some numbers to, to relate to. Um, so um, 
that is um, the the math behind how to calculate um, what kind of uh, eyepiece I can use uh, and how the magnification um, is working. And there is also one more thing I want to mention and that is um, some people like to use uh, filters uh, to use uh, with their observations. This is a UHC-S filter. Uh, it's a visual and photographic filter from Bader Planetarium, which uh, blocks the light uh, and is uh, uh, making the image a bit more uh, higher contrast. And how these are working is quite easy. It's a two inch filter. And what you do is uh, all of the eyepieces, or almost all of them, have filter threads in the bottom. So what you do is you just attach this filler set and put it in the uh, diagonal, like this. And it's supposed to uh, give the uh, deep sky objects a bit more contrast. Let's have a look um, how these um, eyepieces um, are uh, changing when you change the focal length of them or when you change the uh, apparent field of view. Uh, so I have uh, opened up the Stellarium uh, app. Um, this is quite good, it's uh, free, so I highly recommend this one. Um, I have already uh, made a list of my uh, eyepieces. Uh, the luminous 7mm, 15mm. I also made a, I don't have the 25mm, but I made a comparison between the smaller Celestron uh, plus 25mm, which has a apparent field of view of 52 degrees. So we can compare that with the luminous uh, that has 82 degrees apparent field of view. And I also added my uh, telescope. Um, so we have a correct um, uh, explaining of, of how it will look. So this is a a typical horizon uh, at uh, uh, half past ten uh, this evening uh, when I'm recording this, um, and almost everyone has uh, probably seen the Pleiades. Um, uh, deep sky object. So it's an open star cluster quite close to us. Um, so let's have a look. You can actually see this with the naked eye. Uh, so you have a, a quite good comparison on how the magnification works. Uh, so let's start out with choosing the telescope. This is the Mead 5000 with 700 millimeters focal length. And we will activate the uh, eyepiece view. And we will start off by using the lowest magnification eyepiece I have. And this is the 31mm eyepiece uh, luminous with a 82 degrees apparent field of view. So this is how it's supposed to look in that eyepiece together with that telescope. Okay, so let's change the eyepiece to the um, 25 millimeter. Um, this is the luminous 25 millimeter, which has a 82 degree apparent field of view, and let's compare that with the plus 25 millimeters. Do you see the uh, uh, the change of uh, how much you can see? So this is the eyepiece with uh, 52 degrees apparent field of view and this is a 25 millimeters with the 82 degrees. It's quite a big um, change uh, when you are using a eyepiece with a bigger field of view. So once again 
the 25 millimeter with 52 degrees apparent field view and this is with the 82 apparent field of view. Let's keep digging down. This is the Celestron Luminous 15 millimeters with 82 degrees apparent field of view. And last, the seven millimeters. And here you can clearly see um, how small field of view it has with that magnification. Um, basically, when I am observing deep sky objects, um, I usually start off by using the lowest magnification and I quite often want to see the whole object. So in this case with this telescope and uh, the Pleiades uh, in, uh, in the target, I would probably go with uh, uh, this eyepiece, the 50mm uh, with 82 degrees uh, apparent field of view so I can see the whole uh, area. If you want to try to um, uh, resolve some double stars, um, you might want to, uh, let's have a look here, like these ones. Let's say if we have a um, uh, two, to small eyepiece or a eyepiece with a low magnification, we can't resolve these stars. Uh, then we have to uh, bump up the magnification to be able to see these. Okay, I really hope that this uh, helped uh, a bit um, to see how magnification, but not the just magnification, but also uh, the apparent field of view um, how that affects uh, what you uh, can see through your eyepiece. Thank you very much for um, watching this video. Um, please like uh, my channel, subscribe and share among friends who might be interested in watching the wonders of the universe. That's all for me this time. My name is Daniel. You have been watching Exo Photography.